Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to present you a really awesome way of calculating the integral, the line integral of a vector field. Namely, suppose you have a curve C that looks like that and you have a starting point and an end point. And suppose that your vector field is conservative which means that it's the gradient of some little function f. So suppose your vector field has an antiderivative, then it turns out you can just evaluate the integral simply by saying that it's the difference between the f of the endpoint minus f of the starting point. which shouldn't really surprise you because remember in single variable calculus what do we have? We have that the integral of f prime dx that's f of b minus f of a which is if you want f of the end point minus f of the starting point. So it's the same thing, namely remember the analog of derivative, in this case is the gradient, and we still have f of the endpoint minus f of the starting point. So in other words, if you take an arbitrary vector field and you write it somehow as the gradient of a function, then you're in the game. It's very easy to calculate uh, line integrals. And indeed, let's do an example. Let's calculate f dotted with dr, where f is 3 plus 2x y squared, 2x squared y, and c, let's make it complicated, it's the arc of the hyperbola. y equals to 1 over x from 1, 1. 2, 4, 1 quarter. And careful, again, this technique doesn't always work, but if it, it works if f has an antiderivative, in other words, if it's conservative. So, as usual, let's draw a picture. So you have this arc of hyperbola from 1, 1 to 4, 1 quarter. Goes like this. And important, this is the starting point. And this is the ending point. And it turns out, it, in this case, it doesn't matter that you go it hyperbola -y or straight line segment -y or whatever. It'll always give you the same answer. And you have to understand, try to do it on your own with just parametrizations. It's possible, it's a pain though. But it turns out here there's a much easier way of doing this. And essentially, let's find an antiderivative of capital F. But first we need to check if it indeed has an antiderivative. And the way to check this is in the two derivative case, in the 2D case, you want to check that the y derivative of this, e, sorry, you want to check that the y derivative of this equals to the x derivative of that. So basically check that py equals to qx. And I like this because you can just think of it as pi m being quixotic. That's why I'm very proud of my name because I can use it in this example. So, pi m becomes the y derivative of that. So, 3 plus 2x y squared with respect to y. This disappears. You get 2x times 2y, so 4xy. And then this one, so uh, quixotic, 2x squared y, x and that's also 4xy. And it works, bingo! And I'll tell you at the end why we need that. Okay, so it tells us indeed 
that we have an antiderivative. And now let's actually find it. So now let's find f such that your vector field is the gradient of some function. And I know it's weird in, mod in single variable calculus, you let capital F be the antiderivative, but here little f is the antiderivative because we let capital F be our vector field. Okay, what does that mean? It means that three plus two x y squared, two x squared y equals to fx, fy, Okay, so fx equals to 3 plus 2xy squared. So the x derivative of f equals to that. So let's just integrate that with respect to x. So f of xy is the integral of 3 plus, if we want, 2x. y squared dx and what this becomes you get 3x plus x squared y squared plus some junk and I know some people are like but this is this is a g of y but uh, I don't care uh, let me give you this technique it works like 99% of the time of course, sometimes it becomes impossible to integrate, but just let it be junk, and then it, it works most of the time, whatever. Okay, then, similarly, fy is 2x squared y, and so let's integrate that. So f of xy becomes integral of 2x squared y dy, and that becomes x squared y squared plus some other junk. And so the question is, what is f? Well, on the one hand, f is 3x plus x squared y squared plus some junk, but also f is x squared plus y squared plus some junk. And the idea is just, you just combine those two, but don't double count. Because notice x squared y squared appears twice, so you just count it once. So f in this case, it's really x squared y squared plus 3x. And by the way, this technique totally works also for three functions so, and for three variables. Okay, good. So f of xy becomes x squared y squared plus 3x. Now, it looks complicated, but the worst part is done, because now we can just use the FTC. So, integral f dotted with dr. Again, we just found that f is the gradient of little f, and that just becomes f of the end point, which is 4 1 fourth, minus f of the starting point. And then just, just, just become so. Uh, remember, f is x squared plus y squared plus 3x. So 4 squared, 1 fourth squared, uh, plus 3 times 4, minus 1 squared, 1 over 1 squared. So 1 squared, 1 squared, minus 3 times 1. And so this we get 16 over 16, which is 1, plus 12 minus one, minus three, and you get nine. Nine, das stimmt doch nicht. And you see, no parametrization. And indeed, if the uh, vector field is conservative, then the line integral is independent of the curve you choose. But if it's not, then usually it depends. Again, look how effortless this is. 
Okay, and if you want, you can stick around. I can give you a very quick proof of the FTC for line integrals. And I can also motivate why we need PY equals to QX. So just a little proof. So suppose F is the gradient of the left, and consider the following. Namely, D over DT of F of R of T. That doesn't work. So, on the one hand, let's integrate that from A to B, DT. Well, we have D over DT of that, so it really becomes F of R of B minus F of R of A. And what are A and B? They're just our starting times, if you want. So this is R of T, this is R of B, and this is R of A. So R of B, it's really the end point. So F of N minus F of star. So exactly what we have, f of n minus f of star. On the other hand, well, we have a compo composition of two functions. So let's just use the chain loop. So what is f? Remember, r is just x comma y, or x, y, z, and they all depend on t. So also, Well, the integral is the integral. But now, again, by the Chen Lu, you differentiate f with respect to x. Again, f of r of t is f of x of t, y of t. So you differentiate f with respect to x of r of t. And you differentiate x, so x prime of t. And you continue f of y, r of t, and y prime of t, dt. Okay. Notice you have a sum of products, so you can write it as a dot product. Integral from a to b of fx, r of t, fy, r of t, dotted with x prime of t, y prime of t, and we're almost done. So x prime y prime is just the derivative of your vector r, so dotted with r prime of t, dt. And notice here what we're really saying, we're really evaluating the vector fx, fy at r of t, but remember, this is the gradient of f, but by definition, this was capital F. So that's capital F of R of T dotted with R prime of T dt. And that's the same thing as the line integral of F. So following this chain or chen lu of equalities, we get that the line integral F dotted with dr equals to F of n minus F of star. And so here's a quick proof of it. Last but not least, uh, I want to motivate why we had this pi m equals to quixotic. So why py equals to qx? It just follows from the definition of conservative. Because if your vector field is f of x, f of y, and suppose f as components P and Q, then consider uh, the following, f of x, y, well, that's f of x, y, but then by Schwarz's theorem, or people call it Clairaut's theorem, that's f of y, x, and that's f of y, x. But remember, f, x is the first component of f, which is just P. So you get PY equals to the second component of F, which is Q, that's QX. 
So, if it's conservative, then we must have PY equals to QX. So it's a necessary condition. It turns out, if PY equals to QX, and your domain has no holes, then F is also conservative. And that follows from Green's theorem, which we'll do next. All right, so I hope you like this FTC extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.